morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Nativity here in San Rafael. We're so glad that you're with us, whether you're joining us on Sunday morning or later in the week. You are welcome and we'd love to hear from you. Please respond in the chat or give a call to the office or send us an email. The bulletin is available on nativityonthehill.org. We begin with our opening hymn, hymn number 423. you have made known to us 
in your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brought princes to know and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubbles. To whom then will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these, who brings them out of their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars calls them all by their name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve humankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Hallelujah. A reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I proclaim the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. If I do this by my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. 
to the Jews, I became as a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law that I might win those outside the law. For the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. After Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. This week, I spent some time with a member, uh, a person I'm counseling and supporting. I'll call her B. She is facing the death of her mother to COVID. Her mother has been suffering dementia 
for a number of years, and she made the hard decision several years ago to put her mother in a home. When her mother contracted COVID 10 days ago, the doctors came to her and said, you have a hard choice. You have to decide on what treatment to give your mother, what measures, and B struggled. What would keep her mother comfortable? She listened carefully to the doctors who explained what the treatment options might give her mother in terms of extending her life. And she wrestled with the hard question about the quality of her mother's life. An impossible decision for anyone, and a decision that so many families are facing right now. Her mother has not yet died, but she will likely die soon. The virus is taking her. B is sitting with her mother, holding her hand, telling her mother that she is loved. Her mother is mostly non-responsive, but over the last few days, she has squeezed B's hand. And at one lucid moment, her mother said, I love you forever. How is God working in this family? Our scripture today might have been written to answer some of the hardest questions that this family faces. What is God's plan? Why did her mother get COVID? What kind of healing is God offering? Is God just letting B's mother die? And what about B's choices? What treatment to offer? Is B following Jesus' call to be? A healer. In our gospel today, we hear the story of the healing of Simon's mother-in-law. Jesus is in the house, right there with the sick woman and her family, her friends. The story does not suggest that Simon's mother-in-law deserved to be sick, or that God might have prevented her sickness. This is the essence of creation. All things that live, die. Jesus came among us as a human to experience suffering and death and unite us with God in that experience. Jesus does not come to help us avoid death. He comes to die with us and to bring us into new life in God. Simon's mother-in-law is dying because she's human, but Jesus brings her physical healing so that she can serve her friends. Hmm. What I hear in that story of Simon's mother-in-law is very much the story of Bee's family. Be and her siblings, her nieces and nephews, they're all witnesses to her mother's long, slow decline. The past few years, watching her mother lose so much has been painful. And at this moment, COVID-19, this strong virus, is taking. Maybe B and her family wish for a miracle a healing miracle that would bring her mother back to strength and allow her to serve her family and her community. But this is not possible for B's mother. 
as B and her siblings pray, a miracle is happening. The family that has been divided over the years that struggled in their relationship is coming together. Her mother was a very reserved and sometimes distant person, is at this moment able to express her love for her children in a way that she hasn't been able to in many years. Through death, with Jesus, new life is coming. The new life for B's family may be a new sense of connection with one another, or it may be the healing of knowing that they are beloved, loved by their mother, and loved by God. Forever, these mothers say, forever. The healing for these mother and her whole family is a healing of spirit, not a healing of the body. Jesus' resurrection promise is not that everyone lives in their bodies forever. It's the promise of new life, a miraculous transformation that brings wholeness, an end to division that continues as a forever love. What I hear in our passage from Isaiah today is a description of God's care and creativity. From the beginning, God separated heaven and earth and created a safe place for God's creatures. I have an image of the dome, like a terrarium, a glass dome that covers the earth, keeps life-giving moisture in so that the grasshoppers, even the smallest, most insignificant creatures, can live. God is caring for the tiniest. If God cares for the grasshopper, then surely God cares for each of us. The ordinary woman, Simon's mother-in-law, Bee's mother, each of us. We have in the passage from Isaiah the image of God making a tent for the world, stretching skins or cloth around a frame to create a shelter, providing the shade and comfort so that God's people are not subject to the dangers of the elements. In the last verses of this beautiful passage, Isaiah speaks of God's strength when people get weary. God is not promising that people will not get weary, get tired, or even wish to die. God is instead promising that in that weariness that is an inevitable part of living, God will provide strength. Listen again. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. The pandemic has gone on too long. Everyone around us is tired, sick, feeling powerless, and faint with worry. And God's strength sustains and renews. I think of Bee's mother squeezing her hand and whispering, I love you forever. This is the strength that comes from God. This is the sustaining, renewing love that will allow this family to rise from weakness and death to new life in God. I hear so clearly in this passage that God's creative work didn't happen long ago at the foundations of the earth. God's creative work is ongoing, continuing. The 
reality of living includes dying. Ordinary people are dying, as our prayer book in the burial service says, in the midst of life, we are in death. And God's way is to bring new life, strength, shelter, and comfort right into the room where ordinary people are dying, where families are making impossible decisions, where people are grieving and are weary. The end of weariness is coming with God's strength and creative healing power. Before I leave our passages, I want to speak about these conflicts specifically for questions about what treatment to offer her mother the conflicting voices she hears from her family sometimes and the doctors. In Paul's letter to the people of Corinth, he speaks about his calling. He says, essentially, I'm not doing what I do for myself. I'm doing it for the sake of the gospel. For the sake of the weak, I become weak. I become a slave to all. I act not for myself, but for others. This sentiment of self-giving for the gospel is what's important in this passage. B might wish that her mother could have a few more weeks or years. For her own sake, she might have chosen some extraordinary treatment. But a decision about what to do in this circumstance requires me and everyone in the room to think about what is life-giving for her mother. And in this case, as she has declined so precipitously over the last few years, now may be the time to allow her to move into new life with God. The decisions that she has made were made for the sake of the weak. She had to give up trying to deal with medicine and instead put her trust in God's healing. Healing that includes physical death but overcomes it with new life in God. Maybe the demons that Mark highlights in the passage are the forces that take away hope. The evil spirits that suggest again and again that death is the end, that life is meaningless, or that weariness is the only human condition. These are the demons that Jesus throws out. The darkness does not triumph over the light of Christ. B is called to live the gospel, to go with her mother and her family through death and into the fullness of life. We say together the Nicene Creed found on page 350 of the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name, they may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guard the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. We pray for our sister parish, St. Paul's, on the occasion of its annual meeting. We pray for healing for our own parish members, Teresa, Marge, Juliet, Mary, Dan, Donna, Jim, Leslie, and Wayne. And for our families, friends, and neighbors, remembering especially Colton, Helen, Catherine, Ed, Daniel, Marco, John, Thomas, Marge, Mary O, Mary P, Doug, Barbara, Nathaniel, Les, Holly, Linda, Sarah, Kelly and Dennis, Bob C, Jason, Kathy P, Elizabeth, and Miles Miller and his family, and grant who may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Remember especially those suffering COVID-19 and all who are caring for them, those whose relationships are broken, those who live in fear and despair. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten, O God, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, at his coming in glorious majesty. Amen. Let us
confess our sins to God. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God be always with you. And also with you. You'll notice that today we are not removing our masks. Um, this is at the instruction of our bishop, the Diocese of California. We are doing everything we can to keep our community safe, even when it's only three of us gathered here today. Uh, we want our masks to be a sign of our care for one another and um, the necessary safety precautions. We do note that um, there are plans to begin regathering outdoors, and we'll keep you informed as we do that. But it is our intention to continue to broadcast our 10 a.m. services um, into the foreseeable future. We've had a wonderful and annual meeting last week. Um, we welcomed new vestry members, Penny Petit, Jean Heine, Carl Robinette, and Norma Barr. We approved our annual budget and our annual reports, which highlight all of our ministries, are available on our website, nativityonthehill.org. Our Bible study group is meeting now every Thursday morning. You're welcome to join at any time at 10.30 on Thursday by Zoom. We are um, continuing our work now with Sacred Ground, a course, a discussion group on uh, race in the Episcopal Church and in our lives. Um, we had our second meeting with St. Paul's and St. Francis, and it's a profound conversation. Uh, we will share more of the learnings from that discussion group uh, when it concludes. It's a, uh, I believe, 20-week session, so uh, it'll be several months before you hear about that again. There will be a Zoom coffee hour today following our service. The link is in the bulletin and on our website. And finally, we with Thanksgiving receive your offerings of pledge and plate today. You can send us a check or hit the give button on the website. And all who participate in this Holy Eucharist virtually receive the full benefits of the sacrament by coming with the intention of being united with Christ and one another. Through Christ, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruits of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, wind, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna and Mahayan, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us, he broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw the whole world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave it to you, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. We offer you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language, people and nation, to the feast you have prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
Thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together now a blessing for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we give a special blessing to our music director, Dylan, this week, as he celebrated his birthday. May the blessing of the God of Abraham and Sarah, and of Jesus Christ, born of our sister Mary, and of the Holy Spirit, who broods over the world as a mother over her children, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our post-communion hymn is, In Christ There Is No East or West, hymn 529. <laughs>